So in this mini video series, we're going to have a look through the tools that allow remote access for Linux shell through a web interface. So specifically in this one, we're going to see about GoTTY application. So if you want to learn more, stick with me. Hello, what's up guys, Medium Guy here. Welcome to the second episode of the Remote Linux Shell Access video series. So in this video, we're going to have a look to the GoTTY application, which is written in Go and provides us a lot of cool features and cool options. So without any delay, let's get down to work. So as you can see, I'm in the UDI GoTTY repository page. So as it is written in the about section, it says share your terminal as a web application. So that's exactly what this tool does. Here we've got the release section. We can download whatever version that we want. And over here, we've got a brief summary of how to install it and how to make use of it. So for the installation, I'm going to download the release versions on GitHub. So if I go to VS Code over here, you can find a readme me file in the remote linux access go tty directory in my github repository where you can find the link in the description section down below so i'm going to hit ls as you can see i've downloaded the go tty application with this command over here which is wget command and the link of the latest version release so what this command does is grab the version 1.0.1 of GoTTY application, which is the latest version as of recording of this video. So by using the tar command, I'm going to extract whatever is inside the .tar.gz file. Again, if I hit ls, I can see that I now have a GoTTY file, which is in green color, which means that it is an executable file. So simply by saying dot slash go TTY, I'll be able to use this executable file. Or simply if I copy this file on the slash user slash bin directory, I'll be able to run this from any directory that I want. So going back to the documentations, on the usage section, generally we have some options that we can pass in which we can define things like the address or the port, the credentials that will be required when accessing the web UI and things like that. So basically we can pass arguments when running the command or we can set the relevant environment variables or finally we can have a configuration file on the home directory .gott address and in that we can also set the exact same configurations so for the basic usage i'm just going to hit dot slash go tty top and as you can see it runs a web server that is running on my local ip address on port 8080 which is the default port for go tty so if i go ahead and hit this url on the browser as you can see because i passed dot go tty top command it is going to show the top commands result in the output when i go ahead and hit my local ip on port 8080 so we can run almost every command that we're able to run on the normal shell so like for example i'll say dot slash go tty bash again if i hit refresh over here as you can see it creates a bash session but as you can see i cannot type anything in it so the reason is that over here on the options we've got an option that says permit write or dash w so basically if we pass this will permit the clients to write to the tty so i'll hit ctrl c and if i pass a dash w before bash I'll hit enter and if I refresh my web page as you can see I'm able to type in the shell access that I have through the web interface so again I can hit every command like nano make my changes and hit ctrl x to get out of it and things like that so going back to the options we've got things like dash dash address that we can define the IP address that this web service will try to listen on so the default is 0000, 000 which will bind to all the IP addresses of my local machine 
then we can define dash dash port or dash p to again define the port that the web service will try to listen on and again the default value will be 8080 and next we saw the dash w and next we have the dash dash credentials or dash c by which we'll be able to set credentials which will be a basic authentication to the web service so basically when the clients will try to access the web ui they'll be prompt with a username and password before they are able to access the shell through the web interface so i'm going to hit ctrl c after the dash w i'll hit dash c and i'll say user colon pass of course if you are exposing this through your network just go ahead and use complicated username and password instead of this value that i just defined so if i hit enter go back to the web page and if i hit refresh you can see that it requires a username and password so i'll say user and pass for the password I'll hit enter and you can see that I'm now authenticated with a basic authentication mechanism so we can set things like dash dash random URL or dash R to add a random string after the port section so like for example if I define the dash R you can see that it adds a random string after the port so this is the path that this web service will be available on i'll copy paste the string over here and if i hit enter you can see that i'm now able to access the service through this random url over here so basically if i remove this and hit enter you can see that i get a 404 error which is the error for page not found and next we have the options to enable tls so by passing the dash dash tls or dash t and dash dash tls cert and giving the address of the cert file also the same for the tls dash key then as a result our web service will be exposed over https and will be much more secure so next we've got some other options that they might be needed for some use cases so like for example we've got the dash dash once so right now if i hit exit i'll hit enter and i'll hit refresh and you can see that i am now again in the shell session so i'll hit ctrl c and by using the dash dash once option i'll hit enter and if i refresh this you can see that the random path has been changed and i need to copy paste the new one or the old one so i'll do my things and after I exit, you can see if I refresh, the web service is down and over here, you can see that the command has been exited. So that's all for this video. As you can see, by using this tool, we are able to expose our Linux shell through a web interface on network level. And actually it will be available and reachable through the network interface address that we defined through the options. So be careful when you want to integrate this in your infrastructure. And of course, be sure to make this as secure as possible. Also, you can put this service behind a proxy server, like for example, Nginx, and you can expose this service behind that. So as a result, you'll be able to get more security and more configurations like for example restricting the ip addresses of the clients that will be able to access this web service also if you want to learn more about nginx configurations and the features of nginx i've got a whole playlist that you can find the link down in the description section also don't forget to watch the other videos on this mini video series in which i'm trying to demonstrate the tools that are available in order to have a secure remote access to linux shell so don't forget to like and subscribe and with that I hope to see you in the next video.